I have in my hands a non-contact or a non-touch voltage tester. This is a south wire. I also have a fluke here. And in a moment, we're going to talk about how they work and then have a couple of little labs demonstrating how they work. Before we delve very deeply into our non-contact or non-touch voltage testers, we need to discuss a little bit about the basics of how they function and also how a capacitor works because they all kind of go hand in hand. So first of all, there is no need to access energized conductors directly with one of these testers. You simply need to draw near it and you can even read the voltage, or I should say sense the voltage, uh, through the insulation, the way, the way that they work. They seek to uh, detect or sense a voltage and they do not provide an actual measurement. They only tell you that they have detected a voltage within their sensing range. And like this fluke, for example, has a range of 90 to 1000 volts AC. And the other tester I have here, the south wire, has a range of 100 to 600 volts AC. Meaning, if you detect a voltage with it, or you get a sense of a voltage with it, it's just telling you that you have a voltage within that range. You don't know whether it's 120 volts, 480 volts, or whatever it is. You just simply know that there is a voltage present. So that may be problematic at times. Uh, it should not be trusted. One of these should not be trusted if you are trying to determine if a circuit is de-energized so that you might work on it. It is not acceptable for that, and NFPA 70E mandates you have to have an actual voltage measurement, not something like this, if you're trying to prove you have an electrically safe work condition. And it functions by capacitively coupling with an energized, ungrounded circuit, or excuse me, conductor. It will not sense a grounded conductor. It will only sense the ungrounded conductors in a circuit. And also, it will not detect a DC voltage. So that may be an issue on certain circuits. And moving on, let's talk a little bit about uh, a, a little bit about capacitors and how they work because the function of these kind of relies on that too. So on the screen, you should see a capacitor, the construction of it, and you can see you have two conductive plates, one on the top, one on the bottom. They're separated by a dielectric, which, which is just a fancy way of saying an insulator. And each of the plate has a lead connected to it. When you have a capacitor like this, if you were to connect a voltage source to it, it would basically push all the electrons onto one plate and leave essentially what are holes on the other. And then if you remove the leads again, it would store the charge. And it, I like to think about it as a big static charge waiting to be released again. And if you again hook some wires to it and completed the circuit, it would discharge and all the electrons would flow back together and everything would balance out. And so the other thing we'll talk about is uh, I have, also, you'll see I have an AC sine wave shown. It it'll, it'll, should appear now. And let's talk a little bit about this in depth. And it's, it's, uh, the first thing is energy is stored in an electrostatic field, like I said. When you connect the voltage source to a capacitor, it will charge and store the energy. Capacitors in a DC circuit will charge and then block current flow once they fully charge. So if it was a battery you hooked to it, all the electrons would flow to one side and eventually they it would basically fill up and the charge would be complete and then it would block current flow from then on because it's all full and there's, there's it, it's infinity for resistance. And capacitors in an AC circuit will allow current flow by storing and then releasing energy uh, with each current alternation and that's why I'm showing that sine wave. So each time the, the sine wave drops down to zero, the stored energy releases and goes back to the other plate and then the other cycle begins and it, it reverses the direction and stores energy again and just goes back and forth. You're storing and releasing energy many times a second depending on the frequency of the circuit. And I'm telling you all of this because non-contact testers function by capacitively coupling with and sensing the consistently, or constantly I should say, modulating electrostatic field surrounding the AC conductor. So if I have an AC conductor here and I put this non-touch tester in there, it's basically sensing that electrostatic field that I consider pulsing as you have the AC sine wave there. The important thing to remember is you do not have to have a current flow or a load. It simply senses that electrostatic field in an energized conductor.
Now let's take a look at how we fit into the scheme when we're working with non-contact voltage testers. And on the screen behind me, you should see a little drawing fly up there. And I have an ungrounded conductor, an energized one going to the source, and then someone standing there with a non-contact tester. And the thing to note is that where that conductor, excuse me, that tester is being held, there is a dielectric or a space between the sensor and the conductor under test, and that serves as our dielectric. It's just a, a, another kind of insulator. And so, let me read this to you. In non-contact sensors that use capacitive sensing or capacitive coupling, the conductor under test serves as one plate of the capacitor, and then there is a body within the sensor, a conductive body within the sensor, that serves as the other plate. But we, as uh, the person holding the sensor, may also become part of the circuit. It, we become part of the second conductive plate, but the value of capacitance that, that is created is so low as of no harm at all to us. They will, these will work without us touching it, but sometimes they work better or only work when we do touch it. And we're going to conduct a lab here in a moment and you'll see just what I'm talking about. We've got a tight shot of a non-contact tester and the cord below it is live. And at present, the tester is glowing, showing it's ready to test something, that it is active, but it's not picking up anything yet. Once it does detect a voltage, it will change colors and it will flash and emit a tone. And the interesting thing about this is, in order for this to work right now, the way I have it set up, I have to become part of the capacitive coupling before it will work. And I may not even have to touch it to make it work. The dielectric, once I get close enough, might change it enough that it'll still make me part of the circuit. So let's see what happens when I try. And you can see I'm not touching it. I'm not physically touching it, but it's working by capacitive coupling and it needs me to be in there to make it work. We're going to finish up our discussion of non-contact uh, voltage testers with a little lab. And let me explain how the lab is set up. It's pretty simple. I have a GFCI protected cord here, and I also have another cord that I'm going to plug in and energize. And as you can see, I've got everything safed off here on the end, so there will be no way for me to access any live voltage. And I'm going to use both of our, our non-contact testers and show you how they work. And I am not going to be wearing any sort of PPE because I will have no access to any energized conductors. So in a moment here, we'll zoom in on this and let's do our lab. We've tightened up our shot quite a bit on our lab and you can see that we have our three wires from our cord out where we can take a measurement. And you'll notice that the green wire is blue and that's simply because of the way we're shooting that. I wanna mention that right away. And I'm going to use both of the non-contact testers that we saw and show you how they work. And it's pretty obvious there is no load present because there's, the wires are going absolutely nowhere. So it kind of proves our point. But I really wanted to show that it, these, these sensors do not detect the ungrounded conductor. So I'll start with the neutral conductor and the fluke and you can see it gets nothing. That beeping, or excuse me, that light you see every so often is just telling us it's ready to sense. But when I approach the hot conductor, the ungrounded, it does tone and shows me there's a live conductor there. And here there's nothing. Same thing with the ground, nothing. And now I'll go to the south wire and we do the same thing. And it shows a glow when it's ready to sense and it gets nothing when I go to the grounded or the neutral conductor. Obviously nothing to the green. I, it, that was just me touching it did that. But when I go to the ungrounded or hot conductor, it tones, changes color, and you can see it flashes a little bit. So they really do work that simple. Uh, they're a very effective device, but what I don't know is the exact voltage here. I just know it's within the range of its detection. I just wanted to close by mentioning again, uh, these are a very good tool, but they cannot be used to prove you have de-energized a circuit before working on it. That's very critical. And I also want to mention, you might have noticed a couple times when you would see the sensor flash when I, when I moved it around, when I touched things, they're very sensitive and sometimes it, it will give you a, a quick little flash even when there is not an energized circuit there. And you need to hold it for a few moments and make sure that it continues to keep going to make sure you have a live circuit or, or, or a circuit that is not live.